Welcome back to the King Films College Basketball Bracketology Predictions. This week, we're going to start it a little different. We're going to start with the bubble and our last eight teams in and our first eight teams out of the tournament. To start out at the top, looking fine right now, St. Bonaventure. I think they will need a win in the A-10 tournament, as I said the other day in my A-10 predictions. Check those out above in the top right. Moving on to the next team, we've got UNC. And then we've got Colorado State, Xavier, Drake, Syracuse, St. Louis, and Boise State. All these teams are in hot water right now as there is a good potential for bid thieves. We've already seen in the Horizon Tournament a great team in Wright State coming out of the bracket already via upsets, so it's only logical that more upsets are going to happen. A specific case I see here is Drake. And if they lose one game, they're probably out of the tournament. So they probably need to win their tournament, even though they're in right now. On the wrong side of the bubble, Michigan State will have opportunities against Michigan later. Duke will have to win some games in that ACC tournament after a loss to Georgia Tech. Utah State, same with them in the Mountain West tournament. They're going to have to almost go to the final, you'd think. Seton Hall, after a tough loss, they're going to need some wins in the Big East tournament. SMU, Memphis, and Wichita State could all use strong showings in the American, and Richmond, again, may need three to four wins in that A-10 tournament if they can muster them in order to try and make a run at the field. Moving on to my bracket predictions, we've got the one-seed Gonzaga easily advancing to the second round over the Cleveland State slash Prairie View team. Again, Cleveland State is now getting the auto bid from the horizon but they have not won it yet. That is worth noting. Clemson and Loyola Chicago. I've got Loyola Chicago after Clemson just lost to Syracuse. Texas UCSB, we've got Texas. And then Virginia against North Texas. I've got my first upset with North Texas grabbing the win here. Moving down to the bottom of this same bracket, we've got Oklahoma against St. Bonaventure. I'll take Oklahoma here, even though they've dropped two straight against a good Oklahoma State team. Then we've got Villanova against Vermont and a tough loss in Connor Gillespie tonight against Creighton, but they were strong enough to get that win. I'll give them the win over Vermont. And then again, another win over Oklahoma, although I'm not too sure about that anymore without Gillespie as it appears he suffered a serious knee injury, but I'll give them the Sweet 16 berth. Maryland lost tonight. They probably should be on that eight line, maybe substitute San Diego State instead, but we're giving VCU the win anyways. VCU has been pretty hot in the A-10 as of late. Then we've got Arkansas. No team in the nation has been hotter than this Arkansas team, and I'll give them the win against Weber State, and then again against VCU, and then again against perhaps a overseeded Villanova team without Gillespie, as we talked about before. On the top, again, we've got Gonzaga beating Texas in the third round to face off against Arkansas. And I'm actually going to have Arkansas winning and sending Arkansas to the Final Four. Gonzaga's been playing close with this WCC competition. We'll say, see what they have to show in the tournament. But right now, I'm not sold that they can get it all the way done and that they are at their true peak, which they were at in the preseason. On the right-hand side, we've got Baylor cruising against the 16th seed, and then UConn winning against UCLA after they just beat Xavier. I've got Baylor winning that matchup, and then Tennessee losing to Colgate. Tennessee's kind of reeling right now, so I'll give Colgate the win there. And then I've got Houston over Toledo, and then again over Colgate. And then I've got Baylor just barely edging out Houston in what should be a good game. On the bottom half, we've got a hot Oklahoma State team over North Carolina and then Florida State over Abilene Christian. I'm going to give Oklahoma State the nod over Florida State just because Florida State's been up and down as of late losing to North Carolina, but give me Oklahoma State to win that game. And then another hot team, I'm going to have Georgia Tech winning. Florida's been pretty down as of late, just losing to Missouri to cap off their recent struggles. Then I'm going to have Ohio State obviously beating the 15 seed. And then Georgia Tech upsetting Ohio State. Georgia Tech has won at least three straight, maybe even four. And they're really hot right now, but I have them running into a roadblock against a good Oklahoma State team that's just beat 
another six seed Oklahoma twice in a row, and Oklahoma was much higher before that. Then we've got Oklahoma State against Baylor, and I'm actually going to take Oklahoma State here. I think this is a matchup, so this is my official prediction. I'm getting Oklahoma State in that matchup. I think Baylor, I'm actually going to credit Baylor with their win over WVU. They did not look as good as I thought they were going to. And I know that this Baylor team is better. They should have won that game by 20 plus points maybe at West Virginia. And I know that Baylor would have done that if they were at full strength from COVID. But I don't think they're there yet. They might be after the Big 12 tournament. But if this game were tomorrow, I'd have Oklahoma State. In the bottom right, we've got Michigan over Grand Canyon and then Oregon over Missouri. Morgan just scored a great win over UCLA. I've got Michigan winning that matchup. Then Colorado beating the Drake-Boise State playing game and Purdue beating Winthrop. Then I've got Colorado beating Purdue. Colorado, another really hot Pac-12 team, just beating the LA schools who are at the top of the leaderboard in the Pac-12. But I've got Colorado ultimately losing to Michigan. On the bottom half, we've got Wisconsin against Xavier, and I've got Wisconsin. Xavier's been struggling recently. So is Wisconsin, but I think they're the better team. Then we've got West Virginia beating Liberty, and then West Virginia again beating Wisconsin to send them to the Sweet 16. On the bottom, we've got Louisville over LSU. LSU has been toiling as of late, and Louisville, I'm not really sure what they'll have to work with, as it appears Williams suffered a foot injury, and I've got Iowa beating Louisville in the second round, and then again beating West Virginia. Iowa just beat Ohio State, so I think they're rolling right now. And I've got Iowa going to the Final Four. Yes, Michigan, I haven't really seen them as bad as they were against Illinois. Whether that's Illinois being one of the best teams, or Michigan just flat out not giving their best effort, I don't know. But I haven't really seen Michigan come out like that, so I'm going to give Iowa the nod here. Remember, this is just a point in time. Right now, I like Iowa if they were playing Michigan tomorrow. In the last quadrant, we've got Illinois easily cruising to the Sweet 16, their second round win over a San Diego State who beat Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech has been reeling as of late while San Diego State has been on quite the run. In the 4-5 matchup, USC got there by beating Syracuse or St. Louis, whoever wins the play-in. And Texas Tech got there via a win over Furman. I've got USC winning. They just beat Stanford by almost 40 points. Texas Tech has been up and down recently, but I do like their prospects. This will be a really close game with USC maybe even winning in overtime, but I could see that one going either way. Creighton at Colorado State is another game I can see either way. They've got kind of troubles in the locker room, per se, with their coach offering to resign just the other day. So... We'll see where they go from here after a tough loss against Villanova. And then we've got Kansas over Belmont. I have Kansas beating Creighton in that round, and then BYU beating Rutgers in the 7-10 matchup. Rutgers has been pretty hot as of late, but I'm just going to give BYU the nod because they're playing really good ball in the West Coast Conference, but we'll see what that tournament holds for them. Alabama obviously cruising over James Madison and then BYU, but Here's where the road ends for them. I've got Kansas beating Alabama to face Illinois, who obviously beat USC in the 1-5 matchup. In this matchup, I think there's no team besides maybe Arkansas that's hotter than Illinois right now, but that was Illinois without Io DeSumo, and that is a scary thought. Give me Illinois to the Final Four. Let's take a look at our Final Four. This is by far the most seed diversity I've had in any of these bracketology videos. One seed Illinois, two seed Arkansas, two seed Iowa, and six seed Oklahoma State. So I'm going to give Iowa the nod over Oklahoma State just because I think they're a young team and their run has to end at some point. They were lucky probably to get this far. And I'm going to give Illinois the win in a very close game over Arkansas. Illinois kind of has a home field advantage. It's way closer to them if we look at the geographical nature of the tournament, but not too far from Arkansas. But I'm going to give Illinois the nod here. They're playing really good, and I don't even want to think about how good they'll be if they have Desumu and play like they did against a great Michigan team. And I like Illinois to win the whole thing here against Iowa in the final, but I could see that one going either way. And that concludes the Bracketology update from King Film Sports. Please be sure to like and subscribe and leave your predictions below.